If you've broken a bone, usually it takes at least six weeks before you can put any weight on it, and that's a lot of time for your muscles to weaken from lack of use. So once you can start rehab, it becomes even harder because your muscles have become a lot weaker. When I broke my foot, I spent 10 weeks on crutches and with my leg in a boot, but it was really another six months more after that before I really regained full strength. Today, we'll take a look at whether warming our muscles can slow the rate of muscle weakening and whether it's a useful tool in rehab medicine. The body is incredibly adaptable, and that means that it will change itself to the demands placed upon it, for better or for worse. Since the muscle in an injured leg gets almost no force placed upon it, the body decides that it doesn't need to have as much muscle there. So individual muscle cells will shrink. The mitochondria, the small power plants that generate energy within the muscle cells, also starts becoming fewer and smaller. Finally, because we're not as active and don't need as much blood to those muscles, the blood vessels become smaller and less new vessels get built. The end result is that it takes a long time and a lot of work to reverse these changes and get our muscles back to where they were before injury. About 2018, studies came out that showed that heating muscles in humans can slow down the rate of muscle wasting, following up from earlier research in other animal species. In a 2019 study where healthy participants had one leg immobilized in a cast for 10 days, the group that received two hours of daily heating to their thigh muscles ended up with a lot less loss of mitochondrial activity such that they could still generate energy nearly as well as before the casting. In another study in 2020, healthy participants were not immobilized but had one leg treated with heat for eight weeks. That heated leg had more growth in blood vessels. It's important that this was in an otherwise healthy person, so the heating didn't just prevent blood vessel loss, but actually increased the number of new blood vessels above and beyond that from just normal living. A lot more work needs to be done in this area of heat therapy, but the potential is really huge. Besides helping athletes recover faster from injuries, it might be especially beneficial for people with diseases that limit their ability to exercise, or for older individuals to help maintain their strength and ability to live a healthy and active life even in old age. I hope that you have enjoyed this peek into the fascinating world of environmental physiology. I'm Stephen Chung, and I run the Environmental Ergonomics Lab at Brock University in Canada. If you like this, please subscribe to the channel and check out our other short science episodes. If you want more detailed environmental physiology seminars, please check out our virtual environmental ergonomics series. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.